Hello, welcome to Stories in Time. My name is Eloise Shotler. I'm a storyteller. This is an old story today. It's a story about three brothers. Three brothers who wanted to find something very special and bring it back to their home. I like this story when we're in this time where we're sharing gifts and what gifts are all about. And I like this one because I think they do a good job with it. Years ago, three brothers, they were very friendly with each other. They liked being together. And they decided though that they wanted to do something special, something on their own, not as the threesome, but as a single. They would split up and that they would go on an adventure. They said to each other, let's go away from this home and we'll look for something very special to bring back and see which one of us can bring the most interesting gift. Which one of us can find the most interesting gift? Well, we nodded our head about that. We talked about it a little bit and then we sat down and said, let's do it. And they did. About a week after that little talk, they met together. Their father, who was a small king, gave them some extra money to take with them on the, on the road. They had chosen that the oldest brother would go to the north. The middle brother would go to the south. And the youngest brother would go to the west. And they would see what they could find and they would have to find the most special gift that they could in five years and bring it back. And then they'd decide which one had the most interesting gift. The older brother had been on little journeys before, so he started off with a sort of a dash about him. And he was going to the north, he was checking into forests, and, other towns and where people were a lot of people and then where there weren't as many people. And he didn't find anything for one, two, three, f almost four years. He hadn't found anything that interested him. And he began to not sleep so well at night because he was worrying about whether he would have one of the most interesting gifts until one day he went into a market, and in this shop, there was a man standing there, and he had in his hand a long tube, you know, a spotlight, a shot where he could see in a distance. He saw the man was standing there, and he kept turning his tube on this thing and looking and turning and looking and turning. What is it that you have there that has you so interested? And the man in the tent told him, this is one of my prized possessions. Yes, it is, and I can look through here and I can see all the way to the next country. Would you like to see? Yes, I'd like to see right away. And he took that long tube and put it right up to his eye and he was amazed. He could see all the way across the country and he saw things were happening. He saw buildings he'd never seen before. He saw things, 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 things. I would love to have that. Oh, well, it's mine and it's very special. Well, I would still love to buy it from you. Oh, I would never sell this. Are you sure that you don't have any kind of price at all? I would really, really want to have it, to take back and show it to my brothers. And they argued back and forth for first one day, then two days and three, and he was such a good, good argument giver that finally the man there that owned that said to him, all right. And they decided and they agreed on a price and he gave it to him. 
He had it now. Surely this is going to be the best gift, the best gift, the three of them. He tucked it into his backpack. He packed it up so that nothing could possibly happen to it, and then he started off. He could go home now. He could start his journey back home. Well, the second brother who had gone to the south had had some difficulties too. It's not easy to find something that you think is going to be the most interesting thing that anybody has ever seen. Count on me. Listen to him. See what he got into. And at first, he hadn't seen anything. He just wasn't impressed. He wasn't interested. Nothing was, uh. It was entering the fifth year. He was approaching the fifth year. And he went into a market, a large market. And he looked around. There was a huge stack of the most beautiful rugs he had ever seen. The colors were beautiful. The size was just right for several people to stand on. And as he was looking closer and feeling the softness, looking at the vivid colors on the stack next to the one he was looking at, he saw one of those rugs move. He was down near the bottom of the stack and it moved just a little bit, it shook. And he went over closer and he put his hand on it and it was shaking, shaking. And it was slipping itself out of the stack. It wasn't just stacked. It was moving itself out of the stack. And the man that owned it stepped over there and he said, that is an amazing rug there. That, I, I assure you, you must have noticed that. It moves on its own. It's coming out of that stack. It must want to be going someplace. Have you looked at it? It's beautiful. Have you felt it? It's so soft. It's soft, but it's strong. It's strong. And as he said that, it flopped out of the stack and it lived stretched out on the ground. And he said, step onto it with both feet. And when he did, well, it lifted up. It lifted. It lifted higher and higher off of the ground. And the man called and said, wave your hand so that it knows that you're coming back. It made a little spin around the market, and then it came right back down to the earth. And he was, I must have it. I've got to have it. It's going to be the most interesting thing that anyone could find. And I'm in a contest with my brothers. It's, I've got to have it. They talked for one, two, three, four, five days. And finally, they agreed upon a price. He wound the carpet up. He tied it to his back, a nice tight roll of carpet and started off. He had time enough to get back to his home at the right time. Now the youngest brother had started to the West. He had gone out to the West. He knew nothing about the West, but he had gone that way because it would be the biggest experience. And so as he was walking along, he saw this kind of tree and that kind of tree and big forests and little forests and small towns and big towns, and he didn't see anything that was of interest to him. And the days were passing by and the weeks and the months, and he was approaching into the beginning of the fifth month. I've got to find something. And that afternoon, he walked into a forest, a forest where in the middle of this forest, there was an, an opening. And in this circle, there was a beautiful blooming tree, red, red blooming, beautiful tree and a big piece of fruit hanging off the limb. He walked over, he looked up, there was only one piece of fruit on that tree. Can you imagine? Only one. And he walked over and he thought that would be an interesting story right there. A big, beautiful tree and only one piece of fruit. And he reached up and when he reached his hand up, that piece of fruit dropped right into his hand. 
There was nobody there to pay. There was nobody that wanted it. And so he packed it into his backpack and he started off to go home. They all reached home about the same time. Nothing had been damaged. They decided one evening that they would sit down and they would look at their gifts and they would talk about what their values were and how marvelous they were. And first the older brother showed, oh yes, the tube that could see as far away as possible. And then they looked at the rug that moved by itself. A marvelous, marvelous thing. And then the younger brother said, well, I have a magic fruit. There was only one on the tree. I don't know what it does yet, but it's got to be something magic. Now, the older boy looked again and said, let's look at these again. And he picked up this long, long looking glass and he looked through it and he said, look at this. Look at what you can see on the other side into that other country. <gasps> It's a castle. I'm looking at a castle. And through the window on the third floor, the third floor, there's near the window, I can see a beautiful young woman in a bed with people that look like doctors all around her. She must be very sick. And they all looked, and the father was weeping next to the bed. He had to be the father. He was the only other older man there, so father. We'll go there. We'll go there. Yes. And I'll tell you. So they went. They got into the room. We can help. We, we think, have something here that can make her well. And they fed her half of the pomegranate and as the juice slipped into her mouth, oh, she brightened up. She sat up. It was magic. And she was well within an hour. The king stepped over. I have said that anybody that can heal my daughter can marry her and have half the kingdom. And the other two brothers stepped up and said, well, you wouldn't have gotten here if I hadn't had that looking glass. You wouldn't even have known. That didn't matter. You wouldn't have known if you hadn't come here on the little rug. What would you have done? And they argued about that. And finally, the girl sat up and she said, I will ask one question. And I will decide who I will marry. And she asked the oldest is your magic glass the same as it was when you came? Yes, we could see as far as we wanted to. Nothing has been damaged. Oh, she turned to the one who had the rug. I can fly you as far as you want to go. Nothing has damaged my rug. And the young boy, the youngest one of the brothers, when she looked at him, and asked the question, said, well, no, my pomegranate is not the same. I cut it in half, and I fed you half of it because I thought you would need that much to get well. So it's not the same. It's only half as good as it was. And at that, she turned to her father, the king, and she said, he is the one that I want to marry because his gift was something of his. He's very generous and he took care of what he thought I would need in order to get better. And that was what I did need. That's the man that I want to marry. I've always known, my daughter, that you were something very special yourself. And you are wise, you are wise, and I grant it. But along with that, why not? We'll just have you marry the man that you have selected to marry. He has half of the kingdom, and his brothers can work with us as advisors. And they did, happily ever after.